Hello world! This is our third part of our tutorial series in the simulation of a simple flow in pipe using ANSYS Fluent. Very basic tutorial for a beginner. In the previous video, we already defined our geometry and our mesh. And this is the, the main discussion of the simulation which are the setup and the solution. The setup and the solution itself are called Fluent. You can see here at the component system and you drop the Fluent. It is setup and solution. So these two are Fluent. Okay, just open this setup, open this Fluent. And before we go into the uh, fluent window we must determine how much processor to compute our simulation with serial it means that we will utilize only one processor to our computation in ansys fluent it is possible to use that to use more than processors uh, or code parallel computing and this maximum number of processor determines by your own CPU. In my CPU I use a uh, Intel Core i7. I have six processors and you can check the detail of your processor in the internet. And the more you you, you utilize these uh, processors it will affect your overall software performance beside this ANSYS Fluent and you will have more speed with the more processor okay just click OK to enter our ANSYS Fluent window this is actually the Fluent is and in this setting, you can just follow these steps, general, model, material, etc, etc, until this run calculation. And ANSYS Fluent actually is a really powerful software with a lot, a lot of uh, settings you can see here and it makes real, is really not user friendly for some beginners. And so I just discuss some important parameters that we change for this simulation. So I will not really discuss this a lot. And I believe the ANSYS Fluent default setting is the best if you don't want to change anything. And we, in this setting, we not change anything. Pressure based for flow below the uh, 0.3 Mach number speed of sound and our time is steady because we not dealing we are not dealing with uh, time dependent flow and our graffiti we will uncheck because uh, we we are not dealing with the height difference and the next is the model and I think this is the most complicated part of this setting we just change this viscous and two basic turbulent models you should know is the k epsilon and the k omega and as the rule of thumb k epsilon is the turbulent model that preferable for the free stream flow such as the aircraft in the uh, really huge domain or maybe flow or flow over some buildings and the chi omega is the opposite it is preferable for flow near the wall or flow with highly swirl or flow near the uh, adverse pressure gradient or in the near in the high curvature or sharp edges and we will we will discuss 
these turbulent models in the other video because it is really mathematically intensive. And for this flow near the wall, we will use this chi omega model. Then for the material, we would like to use the water. So first we must uh, download the material from this library. Just click this create or edit and click this fluent database. Actually, we have a lot, a lot of materials here and we pick this water liquid so our li library by clicking this copy close and close we, we have this water liquid in our material library but we not already have this uh, domain as the water liquid we first so we first should click this cells and conditions and double click this and we change our material this is actually the material determination and by doing this uh, our domain will become water liquid or our zone our zone will become water liquid and after that we define our boundary conditions after we defined our surface as the inlet and the outlet at the fluent you will see that this inlet is automatically becomes velocity inlet and the outlet automatically becomes pressure outlet and what we are not defined will become wall solid and this is not really important because this is the internal feature of this domain and at the wall solid it automatically becomes wall and we we can change manually this velocity inlet maybe become wall or maybe becomes a pressure inlet it just helps us to uh, simplify the task and for the inlet itself i want to use uh, one meter per second or you can just use your own value if you want to experiment and just click ok and for the outlet i use a uh, zero pascal catch pressure so it is zero relative to inlet so we can calculate calculate our inlet pressure as a pressure drop we will discuss it later in the results and before we actually start our calculation first we must give these uh, cells um, this mesh an initial gas to start the computation or to do that just click this initialization and for the initial for the initialization itself i'd like to um, guess these cells as same as the inlet so all of this velocity inside these domains we will will be same as the inlet for the initial case so i just use the standard initialization just use this inlet you see this velocity will become the same as the inlet and just click initialize so these all uh, cells will have the value of same as the inlet for the initial case to and the last step is to run the calculation um, actually in numerical method or in the computational method uh, computer can't get the ex an exact solution for the problem this computer is just a guess 
of course with some complicated algorithm of course in a multiple uh, guess or we call it iterations until the solution is not changed anymore or we call it a convergence condition the more iterations we use the more accurate the result will be but of course uh, of course more computational time as well so we just guess uh, maybe 500 and we will uh, see what's happen next just click calculate to start our calculation and you see this is called the receipt the residual plot it means that if this graph is downwards it means that the simulation is on uh, the simulation uh, more convergent value and you see at about 200 iteration it is not changed anymore so 500 guess is I think is too much and if this graph is goes upward it it means that your simulation becomes stiffer again and you should change your settings or maybe your mesh to make sure that this residual is goes down and okay this is I think is the end of this part of the simulation and in the next video we will discuss about the uh, post processing or the results to analyze our resulted data okay see you in the next video